Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Welcome back to Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I have not done one of those in a while. Wow. Yeah, I haven't played this game in a minute. It's funny because I dedicated an entire month of just uploading Age of Calamity stuff. This was a game that brought me from 50 subscribers to 100 subscribers. So very grateful for that. It's a wonderful milestone. But for this video, I'm going to be talking about the best selling Warriors game of all time. And that is this game, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. And I actually love the hell out of this game. I have this game in like top three of all Warriors games in terms of like gameplay and uh, you'll see why. Now I said that this game is actually top three for me in terms of like Warriors gameplay but um I can list like two major problems that hold this game back from being probably the greatest Warriors game of all time. After you finish the main story of the game slash epilogue you kind of just don't have a lot of things to do. I basically did everything, every side quest, everything. And I ran out of stuff to do, that's why I stopped playing this game. Uh, I didn't- I was saving this mission, the Siege of Fort Itano, for another video, but, um, I don't think I'm ready to play this mission, just cause it's- this game is pretty hard, it's pretty challenging. So I'm gonna save that for a later video. But so one of the problems was just content. Uh, this game was lacking end game content and side content. And the other problem we're gonna check out later, but, uh, alright, so let's play this mission, it's gonna have a link in it, and then I'm gonna play as Zimpa, a lot of- I feel like a lot of people don't know that my profile picture is actually of Impa. The reason why I chose Impa for my profile picture was because she was part of the game, Hyrule Warriors, that got me to 100 subscribers. And Impa is my main character in this game. Once we get into battle, you're gonna see my other complaint about this game slash problem that this game has. Yeesh, oh my god. This game takes me back like shit. It takes me back like, what, six months? <laughs> Not that long ago. I guess I should start talking about why this game is top 3 in my Warriors games of all time. In terms of gameplay, I feel like this game is actually a mastery of the Musou formula. You know, the formula that Omega Force has been crafting for over 20 years now? But specifically the past like 10 years, ever since the start of Dynasty Warriors 7. And you'll also notice that the frame drops like crazy. That's, that's the problem that I have with this game is that the frame rate is absolutely abysmal. It actually turns off so many people. I kid you not, when I first booted up the game, and you can kind of tell in my first first part of my playthrough. Well, so yeah, there is a bit of frame drop there, I noticed. Whoa. Hold on. In that first battle, I kind of got disappointed a little bit. I was like, wait, what? Why is the frame like this? Why are, Why is the FPS so bad? And then, um, I mean, I learned to suck it up because I played fucking Dynasty Warriors 3 through 5 and in the PS2 era, and you guys know what I'm talking about. The PS2 era of Dynasty Warriors games were really, like, poorly optimized. Other than the, you know, frame rate and the lack of end game content, side content, this game is a solid ass package. The story was amazing for a person that knew nothing about the Breath of the Wild universe. I was hooked. I love the story. I love the characters. Controls, obviously, it's Musou mastery. You have a universal dodge cancel. You have, um, like, wall jumps, which is something new in Warriors games. This actually opens up the aerial moveset, which is, um, one of the things that, uh, Pirate Warriors introduced. And it just feels like they added everything that they learned from every Warriors game into this game. And it just created what I like, like, mastery is, is the best word I could use, is mastery, really. If you're like a, if you're like a Warriors fan, you'd notice that the PS3, PS4, you know, Wii U, Nintendo Switch era of Warriors games focused more on the mini-bosses and one thing this game does great are the mini-bosses. I mean, they're all challenging in their own right. They all prompt certain actions that you need to use certain game mechanics to get through, like the stasis. And it just keeps you engaged. One of the things about a repetitive game, which is, you know, Warriors games, is that it's hard to keep engaged. One of the things that the mainline Warriors games don't have is the enemy officer types, or the enemy officers in those games don't keep you engaged. The mini bosses in mainline games don't keep you engaged because they're just not difficult. Whereas in Age of Calamity, they're difficult. Like, I'm about to die, holy shit, okay. How do I have healing items? Yes, I do. And there's just so many enemy variety that um, it never really gets boring all that much. Oh. Executions are beautiful too. Oh, jeez, I lost. 
and you also get a retry button, which is, um... The good thing about this game, too, is that you get a retry button, so... Another thing is that, you know, character variety is really good in this game. So Link's all basic, he's vanilla, you know, he's balanced, well balanced and all that stuff. Impa is the ninja type. When you play Warriors games, you probably know why I would pick her to be my main is because, uh, well, ninja types in Warriors games are always super good. You know, just look at Konoichi, look at Nene. Oh my god, I'm like just mashing, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. But ninja types are really good, they have multi-hit, all that stuff, all that fancy stuff, and they're quick. A lot of her moves are cancelable and quick. That's something that I loved about this game was that every character was super unique, their playstyles were super different. And I didn't even notice it, but I switched characters, and that's another feature, is that you can have up to four characters, depending on the mission, and you can switch between them, and uh, it never really gets dull. Uh, graphics are amazing. I mean, you see pop in, like, you know, the, what is the term for it, but it's like LOD? Something? I think it's called LOD? I don't know. But the distance between the rendered textures around you is very short. It's just Switch hardware. If this game, like, was on PC or something, by god, this would be probably the greatest Musou of all time. And I hate to say that because I hate to say that frame rate is the thing that holds. Why is there so many fucking guardians? What the fuck? Okay, I am really in trouble right now, but. It sucks to say that the frame rate is the only thing that's holding this game from really being great because frame rate is such a like really you know we're in 2021 frame rate should be a standard or 30 fps should be standard at least 60 fps should really be the standard but 30 fps is like the bare minimum come on and they, this game doesn't even do that so if they ever release this game on like nintendo switch pro or whatever i don't know what the rumor is for that the new nintendo system oh my goodness bro Jesus Lord. But, yeah, if they ever release this game, or if it has backwards compatibility with, like, the, the Nintendo Switch Pro, I'm for sure playing this game, and, um, I would be happy to name this game probably top two Warriors games of all time. I'm about to die. Uh, I'm just gonna spam... spam stuff, because I don't want to die. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Like I said, this game is hard, it's challenging, it's engaging. Witness, motherfucker! Oh man, I gotta deal with these fucking guardians again. Why is there so many of them? Alright, what? how do I deal with this? Because this is actually a challenge that I really don't know the answer to. You expect me to dodge lasers from like five guardians. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? This is absurd. You know, maybe this is the... I am actually stuck. I don't know what to do. Okay, maybe... Well, the only mission objective is to actually just go there, so... Maybe I should just do that instead. So, other than everything that I've said so far, the combat system for this game is very deep. Super deep, and you just gotta try it out for yourself, man. There's so many factors, options, and equipment that you can use to, um... progress in these stages that, um, there's just so, like... Speaking of, like, you can use wands, which actually have, like, certain effects based on weather and also the enemy, like, elemental type, which is already going to be, like, super thought-provoking already because you got to think about elemental matchups and stuff. Oh god. Oh, and, yeah, environment, too. So I used fire on the grass and it did extra damage because fire and grass create more fire. There you go. The mission wasn't to fight all those guardians, it was just to capture the outpost. Okay. That's good to know. That's just kind of my thoughts about this game and why I believe it's deserving of being the best-selling Musou game. Other than the fact that, you know, Breath of the Wild sales definitely boosted the hell out of the sales of this game. If this game had nothing to do with Breath of the Wild, it would probably get a lot of... It would not even come close to what it sells right now. But yeah, this game was just a perfect storm. And uh, once the DLC comes, it's going to fix one of my two issues of this game, which was content. And uh, there's only going to be one issue remaining, and that's the frame rate. So, I'm going to catch you guys later. I'm going to let y'all rock. Let's go.